Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering creating this small little React chat app. If I open this up in an incognito window, you can hopefully see how this works. Uh, there's no user accounts tied to this, it's just a way to use the action cable server to have chat messages be shared amongst whoever many people you want. Uh, you're not here to learn English, I hope. Uh, but it's just a quick exercise to see how you can connect React to a uh, chat application like this. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the server, cd out of here, rm-rf this directory, and then we can uh, cd, or we can do a Rails new uh, video and call it with the dash dash API flag. I'll cd into the video, and then I'll do a code dot right here to open this up inside of VS Code. We then have uh, the VS Code instance right here. Cool, let's go ahead and let's do a Rails G scaffold. I'll go ahead and do a control plus a bunch of times. We want to scaffold out some messages, give each message a body of type text. Go ahead and run that. Next thing we wanna do is a Rails G channel. We'll call this the messages channel. We then need to uh, exit out of here real quick, come into config the uh, oops the gem file sorry and then around line 37 we want to uncomment the rack dash cores you can then run a bundle install command just like that one and then we can hit control l to clear this let's come into the uh, config initializers cores.rb in here we will uncomment all of this and then you can either change this to be the local host for your React app or the URL for your React app. In my case, I'm gonna leave it as an asterisk while I test. Other thing to check is make sure your methods has the delete method in it if you're trying to uh, allow a delete action, otherwise it won't work. You then go ahead and close this, close the gem file, come over here, come into the uh, routes.rb, and we just real quick want to do the action cable server. And for that, uh, GitHub Copilot already knows it's going to be a mount action cable dot server arrow into the slash cable. You can go ahead and save that. At this point, you're pretty much done with the routes. The uh, only other things we really have to do here is inside of the channels and the messages channel, we want to stream from a, and I just like to grab the class here for the channel, the messages channel. We can save that. Then we want to come into the models and the message.rb. Inside of the message.rb, every time we create a message, we want to broadcast it out to uh, all of the other channels. So what does that look like? Well, we just come in here, we say after create commit, and then broadcast message. Now we're gonna be doing this with a basic post request as opposed to a WebSocket send. There's two different ways to do it. I prefer to do it through the messages controller and have that controller save the message and then have the model send out the broadcast. You can of course do it through the WebSocket if you'd like, uh, but in this case, it's not entirely necessary and you'll hopefully see why. We can grab the messages channel and then we want to pass in a object. This is gonna be an ID which is just gonna be the ID that we have and the body, which is gonna be the body of the message. So we're passing back the message's ID and its body. We don't have to specify those, it's just sort of implied. And we're doing it inside of this little braces right here uh, because that just allows us to grab these directly without having to do like a json.stringify. All right, now that all of that's done, we can um, pretty much get started with the V side of things or the React side of things. To do that, let's do a npm uh, create Vite at latest. Then we can name this something. I'm going to call it client. We can come down here to React, hit enter, JavaScript, hit enter, CD into client. That's why I love Vite, by the way, because it's so fast. We'll run a npm i. And then over here, I have to stop my other server and make sure I'm in the Rails app. I'm going to go ahead and run Rails s to start our Rails server. So we're going to have the Rails server over here. Let me rename this Rails server. And then we're gonna have the uh, React app right here. So this one, we can pretty much go ahead and run. So I'll do a npm run dev. That will be our localhost 5173, which is our Vite React. Then we have our localhost port 3000. I can go over to slash messages. It'll tell us we need to run our migrations and we'll have the messages right here. So there we go. We have the API and we have the actual app. I'll go ahead and close all of this. 
we're going to want to come into our client folder, our SRC, our, uh, I guess we can start in the app.css. Let's grab all of this backspace control S that gets rid of all of our styling. And then the next thing I want to do is just throw in the styling I had in that demo app. You can of course copy this or not. It wasn't the best looking styling, but it was just the stuff that worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in two at a time. So we got the messages and the message form. The next thing we need is the messages input and the messages button. So this is the thing we write the message in. This is the thing we send it with. And then the last thing I had was the header for the messages. That's not really gonna do anything for us here, uh, but it'll change what it looks like when we start actually creating the, uh, the HTML here. I'm gonna gra grab all of this stuff and get rid of that as well. And then inside of our app.jsx is where we're effectively gonna be doing everything else. Now in here, we're gonna have, uh, let me see, let me full screen this, uh, or actually I'll hit control B to hide the side panel. Might work a bit better. We're gonna have a const for our messages. It's just gonna be our use state. And we're gonna have a const for the GUID because as you might recall from the previous video we did like last week, uh, we need to set an ID when we request to connect to the action cable server. So we're just gonna be generating a random one. And then the messages array is pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna have an array of messages, right? So for the actual GUID, this is gonna go inside of our app right here. We're gonna have a div with a class name of message header. It's gonna have the word messages in it and then the GUID. Right now we don't have anything in the GUID, so we need to actually initialize that. To initialize it, we're gonna to wanna to come up here outside of our function for the app and just create the const for the WebSocket. It's just gonna be a new WebSocket that lives at this URL. Then we can come down here and we can do a WS on open. So when the WebSocket opens, I want it to say, hey, I uh, connected to the WebSocket server. So we'll say connected to WebSocket server and then we can do the set guid right here so oops we then need to close this just so it doesn't error out you can see right here this is what the guid generates it's just this random string of nonsense but it allows us to have something unique in each tab that we open this up in now we can go ahead and do the actual WebSocket stuff so we're going to start off by doing a ws.send or we're going to send some data to the action cable server we do need to json.stringify it. We need to pass in a command, which is gonna be a subscribe command. And then we need to pass in a identifier, which is again gonna be some json.stringified stuff. And then we can go ahead and close this. And we can close this, hopefully, there we go. So inside of this identifier, we wanna uh, tell it which uh, our, what our ID is, which is gonna be our GUID. And then we wanna tell it which channel we wanna to connect to, which is gonna be the messages channel. We can go ahead and refresh this. I'll hit Control Shift I, and in here we can see we connected to the WebSocket server, which means this ran. If we check right here, when we refresh, we should hopefully see uh, that we uh, started streaming from that channel right here. Messages channel is streaming from Messages channel, right? So that 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 part's working. We're at least sending the connection request. We seem to be connecting okay. Uh, the next thing we want to do is. Um, probably fetch any messages that are already in the Rails app when we load. So to do that, we need to create a use effect. This is gonna happen right here. So this is a function that will effectively run when the component is mounted. And then we can say, look, only do this when the component's initially mounted. Now, because we are in React 18, that is gonna use React strict mode, which is gonna cause this use effect to run twice instead of once uh, because of reasons that are beyond human comprehension. Uh, we're just gonna play along with it. We're gonna assume this is gonna run twice and we're just gonna deal with the consequences of that. We do need to actually create this fetch messages function. So let's go ahead and do that. This is gonna be uh, const fetch messages, which uh, we, we really need to make sure is async. So we'll just say async right here uh, because of course we are doing a get request, right? So the response, we're gonna go to uh, const response equals await fetch, and then we're gonna do a get request to localhost port 3000 slash messages. Once we have that, we can then do a const data equals await response.json, just like that. And then the last thing I wanna do is call set messages, and then we can go ahead and close this. Now, I realize while I'm writing this that we can probably refactor this. 
I'm gonna call this set messages and scroll down. Then we'll pass in the data. And then down here, we'll just go ahead and define that real quick where we do set messages with the data. And then we call const messages container equals, uh, well, we don't need that. You can just do a messages container dot, and then uh, we can do the scroll top is equal to messages container dot scroll height, just like that. And we can go, go ahead and close that. Let's scroll up here and let's do a const messages container is equal to a document dot get element by ID messages. That's gonna be the thing holding all of the messages inside of it, which means we need a class name of messages and a ID of messages, just like that. There we go. And now in here, we need to call messages.map. We iterate through each message. For each of these messages, we need to do the class name of message, and we need to do the key, which is the message.id, which as you'll recall from our messages model, which should be in here, that is the uh, ID of the message itself. So we pass back the actual messages ID, we put that inside of the key, so it doesn't yell at us that it needs like a unique thing because React is super quirky and funny. Uh, now that we have that, let's do a P tag. Let's give this the message.body. And now that all of that's done, we can close this div. You can come down here, we can do a, a two parentheses and a brace. That will hopefully allow us to um, uh, you know, have all of these be looped th through. The issue is, uh, we, we still need to do a bit more, right? <laughs> like, um, we do need to initialize the, the messages. We need to grab the use effect, I guess is what's also yelling at us for. So we'll say use effect, just like that. There we go. So that seems to have caught or fix some of these issues. The other problem is we don't have any messages yet. So let's go ahead and let's stop our Rails server, run a Rails C, and let's just create one message real quick. We'll say message.create, give it a body, say testing, testing, one, two, three. That creates that message, stop the server, run a Rails S again. And then let's come over here and let's refresh the page. So we are getting that message, that's a good first step, uh, but it is having a problem reading the scroll height of this uh, set messages thing. So what we probably wanna do is when we do this reset scroll right here, uh, we want to, before we set the messages, we just want to return if messages container is not defined because it might not be defined yet. In this case it is. Uh, so that seems to have fixed that issue. Next thing I wanna do is create the actual messages form, which is gonna be below the messages container here. So we can come down here below the messages container, create the messages form. For this form, we want to have a on submit. We can go ahead and close the form down here. For the stuff in here, we want a, oops, a input. Let me full screen this and close whatever just opened. We want an input with a class name of messages input with a type of text and a name of message. We then want the send button, which will allow us to actually send the message. You can close out of here, refresh this page. It's gonna yell at us up here because we need the handle submit function, right? So if we come over here and I find the handle submit in my notes, we can come below this use effect, do a const handle submit. This will equal a uh, async, and then we pass in the, uh, let's just call it E, and then we do an arrow function. And then in here we do a e.prevent, E dot prevent default, we hit enter. Then we grab the const mess or const body equals E dot target dot message dot value. We can then do the E dot target dot message dot value. Next step is the actual response, which is gonna be right here. This is, oops, this is gonna be a await for a fetch. And actually, I don't even think we need this part right here. Uh, we can probably just leave it like this. We do a await fetch to localhost port 3000 slash messages. That's the messages controller. We tell it we want to post, we give it some headers. This is gonna be the content type of application slash JSON, which allows you to actually make an API request with Rails. And then for the body, we just do a JSON.stringify on the body that we uh, declared up here. 
that will happen and then we'll uh, pretty much be good because this gets sent off and then the message gets sent back through the model saving itself. So when the controller in here uh, finishes creating this message, it does a message.save that comes to the message.rb. This says after you save, broadcast a message. After you save, do the action cable.server.broadcast to the messages channel with the ID in the body. That's how all of that works. So we can save that, come over here and refresh the page and hopefully it's done. Now let's come in here and say, hello. So we can send that. It'll say, all right, I've been sent. I come over here, it transmits. Uh, but if we full screen this, uh, we only have a ws.open. What we need is a ws.on get the thing. So for that, we have a ws.on message, which will be equal to, we'll just call it E again. And then in here, what we want to do is do a const data equals json.parse.e.data. We then want to do a couple of returns actually. So the WebSocket server or the Action Cable server sends a bunch of stuff that you don't need. It periodically pings you. You can of course do and, and do whatever you want, handle this however you want. Uh, in my case, I just return on all three of these. It also sends you a welcome and a subscription confirmation or a subscription error. I'm not handling any of those in this example. We then do a const message equals data.message to get that data back from us. And then we call the uh, set messages and scroll down. And then we pass in an array that contains the uh, set of messages we have with the new message appended to the end of it. You can come over here, refresh the page, say test. And now you can see that gets added here because it's going to be uh, sent through the listener in the WebSocket on, on message, right? So now if we try to do a, uh, a control shift N and then we go to local host port 5173, we can come over here and we can hit control shift I. You'll notice that both of these GUIDs are different, by the way. We can see in here, this one's also connected to the WebSocket server. So we can just say, um, how are you, question mark. We can send that and you can see that um, both of these chat windows are in fact receiving that message. And come over here and do a one, two, three again. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like my logic for uh, actually scrolling down here seems to be a little bit buggy. So let me just check that real quick. Okay, so it looks like uh, I need to change my logic here a little bit. Uh, we do have this part right here. I'm going to call reset scroll. And then we're going to create a function called reset scroll, which is just going to do that same logic. And then we can come up to the top here with the use effects. We're going to do one more use effect. This will be for if we get a new message, we'll call reset scroll, which means down here inside of our dependencies, we just want to check if the messages have changed. And now, hopefully, if we refresh both of these, we can come in here and say testing one, two, three, and it should automatically scroll us down. And same thing if we refresh the page, those should get scrolled down. Just like that, hit send, and it seems to be working just fine. So yeah, hopefully this was interesting. It can be a little bit cumbersome to set something like this up, but of course this was under 20 minutes to get a full WebSocket server up and running, I guess, front end and back end, so it's not bad. Uh, it's just also like not great. It'd be nice if we could just run two or three commands, but what can you do? I'm sure there's a faster way to do it. This is just the way I found to do it with Rails and uh, React. So yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful uh, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.